The habitat of deep water corals, also known as cold water corals, extends to deeper, darker parts of the oceans than tropical corals, ranging from near the surface to the abyss, beyond 2,000 meters 6, feet, where water temperatures may be as cold as 4 degrees Celsius 39 degrees Fahrenheit. .Deep water corals belong to the phylum Cnidaria and are most often stony corals, but also include black and horny corals and soft corals including the gorgonians sea fans. Like tropical corals, they provide habitat to other species, but deep water corals do not require zooxanthellae to survive. While there are nearly as many species of deep water corals as shallow water species, only a few deep water species develop traditional reefs. Instead, they form aggregations called patches, banks, bioherms, massifs, thickets, or groves. These aggregations are often referred to as reefs but differ structurally and functionally. Deep sea reefs are sometimes referred to as mounds, which more accurately describes the large calcium carbonate skeleton that is left behind as a reef grows and corals below die off, rather than the living habitat and refuge that deep sea corals provide for fish and invertebrates. Mounds may or may not contain living deep sea reefs. Submarine communications cables and fishing methods such as bottom trawling tend to break corals apart and destroy reefs. The deep water habitat is designated as a United Kingdom Biodiversity Action Plan habitat. <laughs> <laughs> Discovery and study Deepwater corals are enigmatic because they construct their reefs in deep, dark, cool waters at high latitudes, such as Norway's continental shelf. They were first discovered by fishermen about 250 years ago, which garnered interest from scientists. Early scientists were unsure how the reefs sustained life in the seemingly barren and dark conditions of the northerly latitudes. It was not until modern times, when manned mini-submarines first reached sufficient depth, that scientists began to understand these organisms. Pioneering work by Wilson, 1979, shed light on a colony on the Porcupine Bank, off Ireland. The first ever live video of a large deepwater coral reef was obtained in July, 1982, when Statoil surveyed a 15 meters 49 feet tall and 50 meters 160 feet wide reef perched at 280 meters 920 feet water depth near Fuglo Island, north of the polar circle, off northern Norway. During their survey of the Fugloy Reef, Hovland and Mortensen also found seabed pockmark craters near the reef. Since then, hundreds of large deepwater coral reefs have been mapped and studied. About 60% of the reefs occur next to or inside seabed pockmarks. Because these craters are formed by the expulsion of liquids and gases, including methane, several scientists hypothesize that there may be a link between the existence of the deepwater coral reefs and nutrient seepage, light hydrocarbons, such as methane, ethane, and propane, through the seafloor. This hypothesis is called the hydraulic theory for deepwater coral reefs. Lophelia communities support diverse marine life, such as sponges, polychaete worms, mollusks, crustaceans, brittle stars, starfish, sea urchins, bryozoans, sea spiders, fish, and many other vertebrate and invertebrate species. The first international symposium for deepwater corals took place in Halifax, Canada in 2000. The symposium considered all aspects of deepwater corals, including protection methods. In June 2009, Living Ocean Society led the Finding Coral Expedition on Canada's Pacific coast in search of deep sea corals. Using one person submarines, a team of international scientists made 30 dives to depths of over 500 meters 1, feet, and saw giant coral forests, darting schools of fish, and a seafloor carpeted in brittle stars. During expedition, scientists identified 16 species of corals. This research trip was the culmination of five years of work to secure protection from the Canadian government for these slow-growing and long-lived animals, which provide critical habitat for fish and other marine creatures. Topic. Taxonomy 
Corals are animals in the phylum Cnidaria and the class Anthozoa. Anthozoa is broken down into two subclasses octocorals Alcyonaria and hexacorals Zoantharia. Octocorals are soft corals such as sea pens. Hexacorals include sea anemones and hard-bodied corals. Octocorals contain eight body extensions while hexacorals have six. Most deep water corals are stony corals. Distribution Deep water corals are widely distributed in Earth's oceans, with large reefs, beds in the far north and far south Atlantic, as well as in the tropics in places such as the Florida coast. In the North Atlantic, the principal coral species that contribute to reef formation are Lophelia pertusa, Oculina varicosa, Madrepora oculata, Desmophyllum cristigalli, Analopsamia rostrata, Solenosmilia variabilis, and Goniocorella gemosa. Four genera Lophelia, Desmophyllum, Solenosmilia, and Goniocorella constitute most deep water coral banks at depths of 400 to 700 meters (1300 to 2300 feet). Madrepora oculata occurs as deep as 2020 meters (6630 feet) and is one of a dozen species that occur globally and in all oceans, including the subantarctic Cairns, 1982. Colonies of Analopsamia contribute to the framework of deep water coral banks found at depths of 600 to 800 meters (2000 to 2600 feet) in the Straits of Florida, Cairns and Stanley, 1982. Topic: <laughs> Lophelia pertussis distribution. One of the most common species, Lophelia pertussa, lives in the northeast and northwest Atlantic Ocean, Brazil and off Africa's west coast. In addition to ocean bottoms, scientists find Lophelia colonies on North Sea oil installations. Although oil and gas production may introduce noxious substances into the local environment, the world's largest known deepwater Lophelia coral complex is the Rost Reef. It lies between 300 and 400 meters (980 and 1,310 feet) deep, west of Rost Island in the Lofoten Archipelago, in Norway, inside the Arctic Circle. Discovered during a routine survey in May 2002, the reef is still largely intact. It is approximately 35 kilometers (22 miles) long by 3 kilometers (1.9 miles) wide, some 500 kilometers (310 miles). Further south is the Sula Reef, located on the Sula Ridge west of Trondheim on the Mid-Norwegian Shelf at 200 to 300 meters (660 to 980 feet). It is 13 kilometers 8.1 miles long, 700 meters 2300 feet wide and up to 700 meters 2300 feet high, an area one tenth the size of the 100 square kilometers 39 square miles Rost Reef. Discovered and mapped in 2002, Norway's Tisla Reef lies in the Skagerrak on the submarine border between Norway and Sweden at a depth of 90 to 120 meters (300 to 390 feet) and covers an area of 2 by 0.2 kilometers (1.24 miles times 0.12 miles). It is estimated to be 8,600 to 8,700 years old. The Tisla Reef contains the world's only known yellow L. pertussa. Elsewhere in the northeastern Atlantic, Lophelia is found around the Faroe Islands, an island group between the Norwegian Sea and the northeast Atlantic Ocean. At depths from 200 to 500 meters (660 to 1,640 feet), L. pertussa is chiefly on the Rockall Bank and on the shelf break north and west of Scotland. The porcupine sea bite, the southern end of the Rockall Bank, and the shelf to the northwest of Donegal all exhibit large, mound-like Lophelia structures. One of them, the Therese Mound, is particularly noted for its Lophelia pertussa and Madrepora oculata colonies. Lophelia reefs are also found along the U.S. east coast at depths of 500 to 850 meters (1,640 to 2,790 feet) along the base of the Florida Hatteras slope. 
South of Cape Lookout, NC, rising from the flat seabed of the Blake Plateau, is a band of ridges capped with thickets of Lophelia. These are the northernmost east coast Lophelia Pertusa growths. The coral mounds and ridges here rise as much as 150 meters (490 feet) from the plateau plain. These Lophelia communities lie in unprotected areas of potential oil and gas exploration and cable laying operations, rendering them vulnerable to future threats. Lophelia exist around the Bay of Biscay, the Canary Islands, Portugal, Madeira, the Azores, and the western basin of the Mediterranean Sea. Topic. Darwin Mounds Among the most researched deepwater coral areas in the United Kingdom are the Darwin Mounds. Atlantic Front E Environmental Network AFEN, discovered them in 1998 while conducting large-scale regional seafloor surveys north of Scotland. They discovered two areas of hundreds of sand and deep water coral mounds at depths of about 1,000 meters (3,300 feet) in the northeast corner of the Rockall Trough, approximately 185 kilometers (115 miles) northwest of the northwest tip of Scotland. Named after the research vessel Charles Darwin, the Darwin mounds have been extensively mapped using low-frequency side-scan sonar. They cover an area of approximately 100 square kilometers, 39 square miles and consist of two main fields. The Darwin Mounds East with about 75 mounds and the Darwin Mounds West with about 150 mounds. Other mounds are scattered in adjacent areas. Each mound is about 100 meters, 330 feet in diameter and 5 meters, 16 feet high. Lophelia corals and coral rubble cover the mound tops, attracting other marine life. The mounds look like sand volcanoes, each with a tail, up to several hundred meters long, all oriented downstream. Large congregations of xenophyophores Syringamina fragilissima, which are giant unicellular organisms that can grow up to 25 cm in, in diameter characterize the tails and mounds. Scientists are uncertain why these organisms congregate here. The Darwin Mounds Lophelia grow on sand rather than hard substrate, unique to this area. Lophelia corals exist in Irish waters as well. Topic. Oculina varicosa distribution Oculina varicosa is a branching ivory coral that forms giant but slow-growing, bushy thickets on pinnacles up to 30 meters 98 feet in height. The oculina banks, so named because they consist mostly of oculina varicosa, exist in 50 to 100 meters 160 to 330 feet of water along the continental shelf edge about 42 to 80 kilometers 26 to 50 miles off of Florida's central east coast. The oculina banks stretch along 170 kilometers, 106 miles, reaching from Fort Pierce to Daytona, discovered in 1975 by scientists from the Harbor Branch Oceanographic Institution conducting surveys of the continental shelf. Oculina thickets grow on a series of pinnacles and ridges extending from Fort Pierce to Daytona, Florida. Like the Lophelia thickets, the oculina banks host a wide array of macroinvertebrates and fishes. They are significant spawning grounds for commercially important food species including gag, scamp, red grouper, speckled hind, black sea bass, red porgy, rock shrimp, and calico scallop. Topic. Growth and reproduction Most corals must attach to a hard surface in order to begin growing but sea fans can also live on soft sediments. They are often found growing along bathymetric highs such as seamounts, ridges, pinnacles and mounds, on hard surfaces. Corals are sedentary, so they must live near nutrient-rich water currents. Deep water corals feed on zooplankton and rely on ocean currents to bring food. The currents also aid in cleaning the corals. Deep water corals grow more slowly than tropical corals because there are no zooxanthellae to feed them. 
Lophelia has a linear polyp extension of about 10 mm in per year. By contrast, branching shallow water corals, such as Acropora, may exceed 10 to 20 cm per year. Reef structure growth estimates are about 1 mm in per year. Scientists have also found Lophelia colonies on oil installations in the North Sea. Using coral age dating methods, scientists have estimated that some living deep water corals date back at least 10,000 years. Deep water corals use nematocysts on their tentacles to stun prey. Deep water corals feed on zooplankton, crustaceans, and even krill. Coral can reproduce sexually or asexually. In asexual reproduction, budding, a polyp divides in two genetically identical pieces. Sexual reproduction requires that a sperm fertilize an egg which grows into a larva. Currents then disperse the larvae. Growth begins when the larvae attach to a solid substrate. Old, dead coral provides an excellent substrate for this growth, creating ever higher mounds of coral. As new growth surrounds the original, the new coral intercepts both water flow and accompanying nutrients, weakening and eventually killing the older organisms. Individual Lophelia pertussa colonies are entirely either female or male. Deep water coral colonies range in size from small and solitary to large, branching tree-like structures. Larger colonies support many life forms, while nearby areas have much less. The Gorgonian, Paragorgia arborea, may grow beyond 3 meters. However, little is known of their basic biology, including how they feed or their methods and timing of reproduction. Importance Deep sea corals together with other habitat-forming organisms host a rich fauna of associated organisms. Lophelia reefs can host up to 1,300 species of fish and invertebrates. Various fish aggregate on deep sea reefs. Deep sea corals, sponges and other habitat-forming animals provide protection from currents and predators, nurseries for young fish, and feeding, breeding and spawning areas for numerous fish and shellfish species. Rockfish, Atka mackerel, walleye pollock, Pacific cod, Pacific halibut, sablefish, flatfish, crabs, and other economically important species in the North Pacific inhabit these areas. 83% of the rockfish found in one study were associated with red tree coral. Flatfish, walleye pollock and Pacific cod appear to be more commonly caught around soft corals. Dense schools of female redfish heavy with young have been observed on Lophelia reefs off Norway, suggesting the reefs are breeding or nursery areas for some species. Oculina reefs are important spawning habitat for several grouper species, as well as other fishes. <laughs> <laughs> Human impact The primary human impact on deep water corals is from deep water trawling. Trawlers drag nets across the ocean floor, disturbing sediments, breaking and destroying deep water corals. Another harmful method is long line fishing. Oil and gas exploration also damage deep water coral. A study conducted in 2015 found that injury observed in populations in the Mississippi Canyon in the Gulf of Mexico increased from 4 to 9% before the Deepwater Horizon oil spill to 38 to 50% after the spill et al. 2015. Deep water corals grow slowly, so recovery takes much longer than in shallow waters where nutrients and food providing zooxanthellae are far more abundant. In a study during 2001–2003, a study of a reef of Lophelia pertussa in the Atlantic off Canada found that the corals were often broken in unnatural ways. And the ocean floor displayed scars and overturned boulders from trawling. In addition to these managed pressures, deep water coral reefs are also vulnerable to unmanaged pressures, e.g., ocean acidification. And in order to protect these habitats in the long term, methods which assess the relative risks of different pressures are being promoted. <laughs> Oculina banks 
Bottom trawling and natural causes like bioerosion and episodic die-offs have reduced much of Florida's Oculina banks to rubble, drastically reducing a once substantial fishery by destroying spawning grounds. In 1980, Harbor Branch Oceanographic Institution scientists called for protective measures. In 1984, the South Atlantic Fishery Management Council (SAFMC) designated a 315 square kilometers (122 square miles) area as a habitat area of particular concern. In 1994, an area called the Experimental Oculina Research Reserve was completely closed to bottom fishing. In 1996, the SAFMC prohibited fishing vessels from dropping anchors, grapples, or attached chains there. In 1998, the Council also designated the reserve as an essential fish habitat. In 2000, the Deep Water Oculina Marine Protected Area was extended to 1,029 square kilometers 397 square miles. Scientists recently deployed concrete reef balls in an attempt to provide habitat for fish and coral. Sulla and rost Scientists estimate that trawling has damaged or destroyed 30–50% of the Norwegian shelf coral area. The International Council for the Exploration of the Sea, the European Commission's main scientific advisor on fisheries and environmental issues in the Northeast Atlantic, recommend mapping and closing Europe's deep corals to fishing trawlers. In 1999, the Norwegian Ministry of Fisheries closed an area of 1000 square kilometers (390 square miles) containing the large Sulla reef to bottom trawling. In 2000, an additional area closed, covering about 600 square kilometers (230 square miles). An area of about 300 square kilometers (120 square miles), enclosing the Rost Reef, closed in 2002. Topic: <laughs> Darwin Mounds. The European Commission introduced an interim trawling ban in the Darwin Mounds area, in August 2003. A permanent ban is expected to follow. See also Coral Reef <laughs>